Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. Hope that you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're going to listen to Peter Hamill. We're going to listen to A Ritual Mask. This is the first track off of his album Loops and Reels, which was released in 1983. So, I know you're asking yourself, JP, why are you listening to, uh, to this particular song? Why, why have you chosen this one? This is the reason. So I was gifted this, uh, this LP, Music and Rhythm. Okay, this was from the WOMAD festival set up, I believe, by Peter Gabriel, okay? So in here, you have so many, so many, so many different artists who are uh, contributing their music, their dance, their artwork, their culture to this festival. And you got some big names on here. You have David Byrne, Hokusuke, Peter Gabriel, and as I just mentioned, Peter Hamill. You got XTC in here, as well as so many, so many others. So, I was looking through at the songs that they were performing on here, and from Peter Hamill, you have this track. You have A Ritual Mask. So, we're going to listen to this, and as a, as a special treat, uh, we're not only going to listen to the studio version, which I have pulled up on YouTube, but we're also going to watch the actual live version, which as far as I can tell is the live version from this specific festival. I think. I'm pretty sure. It said 1982 WOMAD. So... <laughs> So we're gonna listen to both. We'll listen to the studio and the live. Hope that you enjoy it. Hope that you're here for it. Um, let, let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just get started. Hope you enjoy it. So we're gonna start with the studio version. This is Peter Hamill, a ritual mask. <laughs> thinks that's all the ritual mask its power still strong a memento of his travel that he got for a song he got it for a song Got it for a song. It was the song of the centuries, undisturbed. It was the song of secrets and power words. It was the song of the culture Not grown immune to the virus of progress To the theft of the tune
finds out the bargain Has turned out dreadfully wrong unnerving track it's a little bit psychological horror okay but such an interesting like story going on okay story of a traveler he gets this mask uh i'm assuming from africa based off of what i read here and of course the festival and everything i'm not 100 percent sure but also based off the cover art um gets this mask as like a souvenir brings it back and how funny that he, the traveler gets it as a souvenir but it means so much more there's so much more going on to the mask. It's like he brought something home with him. That is really cool. Um, the music itself is, like I said, extremely unnerving. It has a, a mind-bending kind of psyche to it. Uh, kind of like, like you brought something in that you're not supposed to have. Right? Like, like a little bit of a haunted almost feeling. Or a haunting feeling. And I like how the music picks up as this realization occurs. You know, at first it's just this... This instrument, this stringed instrument, which is a koto, which we're going to talk about. Like I said, I read it in here. Um, and you just have that playing. But then at times, at the end of the lines, it plays like off. It's like it, it's out of tune. Why is it out of tune? Because, mmm, see, story and music. And then as the music picks up, we begin to have, of course, the arrival of the tribal drums. The chanting at one point later on picks up, all leading to this really big climax. Uh, he got it for a song. This is fantastic songwriting, writing, as always. And I always mention this with Mr. Hamill. His lyrics are out of this world. His singing in here is a uh, much more reserved, but also like, like I said, like psych, psychological horror, kind of kind of sound to his singing here. Now, I read the little blurb in here regarding this song because each of the artists. I don't know if you saw, but. Each of these little blocks here shows an artist, what they performed, maybe some information behind the actual performance and, and that kind of thing. And for Peter Hamill regarding this song, let me just read this really quick. During a European tour some years ago, Peter Hamill was presented with a Cora, a 21-stringed harp from Santa Gabia, as featured in the beautiful playing on the Conte track, which he afterwards hung on his wall, blah, blah, blah. He chose to use the instrument on a ritual mask in order to counterpoint in an ironic and challenging way, the song's theme of cultural appropriation. The instrument is used, therefore, not for its traditional musical qualities, right, like what it should be used for, but rather to lay open the absorbing and unsettling atmosphere of the lyrics. That is musical intelligence. That is songwriting. That's just really cool. <laughs> and what a great way Hamill uses the instrument here, you know? I mean, he got it as a gift, and he spun that into the story here. Kind of ironic a little bit. The lyrics here, before we watch the live version, a ritual mask upon the wall furnishes his surroundings, and he thinks that's all. He thinks it's just a nice decoration. A souvenir. Perhaps he's even tried to play it on occasion, this traveler. Right? Picks up the souvenir, messes with it a little bit, and then, like we heard, like there's that one note at the end that's kind of out of tune. Out of tune because of him trying to play it. Out of tune because there's something not quite in tune going on. The ritual mask, its power is still strong. The memento of his travels that he got for a song. He got for a song. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> it was the song of the centuries undisturbed. It was the song of secrets and power words. It was the song of a culture not grown immune to the virus of progress, to the theft of the tune. Stealing their song. A culture not grown immune to the virus of progress. The ritual mask, the evil eye, inhabits his apartment, inhabits his mind with a song of vengeance, of a debt repaid, song of justice, of a hand unstayed. With the song of a culture as old as the hills that sits uneasy on his living room wall like a snake about to kill. I just love that. I love the thought of this, this track. The ritual mask, it won't take long before he finds out the bargain had turned out dreadfully wrong. Oh, he got it for a song. 
That is really cool. And what a great track to fit into this festival. That is just... You can't do better than that. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually take out my headphones from here. That should still work. You guys should still be able to hear me, but I can't hear myself quite right anymore. I'm going to plug my headphones into the laptop here, where I will be now. Switching over and playing a little video here. So we are going to play Peter Hamill. Hear me out. And Peter Gabriel Band Live, A Ritual Mask, Womad 1982. Uh, let me turn up my volume a little bit here. So from the description, it says that you got Peter Hamill, Peter Gabriel, Stuart Copeland, El Shankar, David Rhodes, and Larry Fast. This is a great lineup. <laughs> this is an all-star lineup. So let's go ahead and full screen this over, uh, get the sound going, and let's watch. I'm going to lower my microphone just a little bit. Subject to timing. And uh, for this first uh, portion, we move to Mr. Hamill's department. Man, Gabriel looks so young.
You got to admit. <laughs> nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Mr. Hamill. If you never heard of him before, you know who he is now. That is how you do a live performance. It's so weird. I turned up the volume. I couldn't hear myself because I'm plugged into the wrong thing. Okay. So I really enjoy that extended jam section in the middle that really built everything up, of course, kind of replacing what we heard before in the studio version with something a little more conventional in a sense. Of course, you got Stuart Copeland on the drums, bring in that, that tribal rhythm that just sets you afire. And really the best thing about this live version is of course Hamill's performance, his vocal performance is always top notch, especially the distress and the pain that he releases at the end of the song. Here, it's felt 10 times more just with uh, the, the range and the power of his voice backing up uh, this haunting end to the track. And then Violin from Shankar, who I need to pronounce his name right because I know I mess it up sometimes, but his violin playing really adding that sense of urgency into the track giving it less of a psychological haunt, as I would say the studio is. Here, it's much more of like a, like we're in danger <laughs> kind of sound. So the turbulence is turned up. Um, but if I gotta be honest about comparing, I think I actually, I actually prefer the studio. It seems a little more desolate, a little more empty. And the only things that fill that emptiness is just uneasiness, the rhythms, the, the atmosphere, the brute of it all. And I think that that's just a more interesting tone, what he did on the studio version, compared to a little bit more of a lively performance here. Not that it's, I'm not really comparing better and worse or whatever, it's still a fun performance. But I definitely do prefer the studio track on this one. So, hope that you guys <laughs> enjoyed the video. It's a little different than usual, but I did wanna uh, include not only the studio, but you know, a little bit of the live as well, so we can kinda get a perspective on this one. Um, but guys, I would love to know, what did you guys think? Did you like, first of all, did you like the song? Second of all, do you have a preference? You know, I prefer the more unsettling atmosphere here in the studio, but I do enjoy the, like I said, the danger, <laughs> the presence of danger and of evil. That's also here in the live version. Uh, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Uh, you can follow me in a bunch of different places, but for the rest of the day, hope that you have a great one and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>